And welcome everybody here in Twitch chats and everybody on YouTube for some mono green mid range. I've had a lot of fun playing this deck before. Wanted to bring it back. We're going to try this again some more in Mythic. Of course, as, as we talked about before with playing this deck, we wanted to build a deck with Karn the Great Creator in standard because Karn the Great Creator can um, can do some can do a lot of work against the uh, against the food decks. We've been playing against a whole lot of food decks recently too. But Karn's um, passive ability means they don't get to activate Witch's Oven, don't get to activate the food token. And then even the plus one ability, if they have just a food token in play, you can just plus one on their food token to turn it into a zero zero creature, which of course just kills it. So it can also just kill food tokens with the plus ability. So I always thought that's, that's pretty cool. And then the minus two ability, you get to go grab Spyglass <clears throat> and then you can name Wicked Wolf. You can name Cauldron Familiar. You can name the other things that they can still activate to be able to sacrifice food tokens and try to shut down their deck. Now, Karn also wants a lot of mana, though, because the other, besides Spyglass, other good artifacts to grab, there's not a whole lot of them, but one of the best is Meteor Golem. They cost a lot of mana. And so we and uh, we also have the Great Henjin here that we can grab. So we want to play Karn in a deck like where you have access to a lot of mana. And that's what Nyssa does and Mono Green just in general. You know, we have our seven ramp creatures with Paradise Druid and Incubation Druid. We got our seven Druids that help us ramp. And then, you know, we have Nyssa that, you know, if you have Nyssa, you have tons of mana. Of course, Ugin can make our colorless spells cost even less. So if you have like a Nyssa and an Ugin in play for just one forest, you can play Karn because it costs two less. And, and and you get to play, you can go grab Spyglass and play that for free also. It, it gets pretty crazy. But yeah, the, you know, like whenever we played this deck last time, Voracious Hydra was awesome. We were drawing Voracious Hydra at, at uh, beneficial times for us. We're putting a second, or like, sorry, we're putting the fourth Voracious Hydra in the sideboard. We didn't have that um, in here last time. Um, but we talked about that at the very end of the video. A lot of people ask about like why I'm playing Golos. It's basically because with Karn costing four, sometimes you don't really have any other action in your hand. You just have Karn and like some lands. And Karn... Karn can grab Golos, where Golos then um, is something you can play on the very next turn to just be a value artifact that ramps um, and gets you gets you another land into play. Sometimes maybe you just have like Karn and then like Ugin's and Great Henge and stuff like that in hand, and you can't quite get to enough mana to Ugin, where Golos can help ramp for you. Um, another card is Stone Coral. Stone Coral Serpent's also just a really good creature, where maybe Stone Coral Serpent would be better than Golos. Cause that's just another good. Uh, value creature to be to be playing it's not it's not a value creature but it's just a good good creature but yeah we got the growth chamber guardians in here because of the synergy with the great henge uh, it may look like we're just playing the one great henge but we're really playing four great henges because karn can grab a great henge as well but we got a little bit of stompy going on with yorvo questing beast vivian so we can put pressure on our opponent with with this stuff but then we also got our late game heavy hitters with karn grabbing meteor golems and nissa and ugin and all that kind of stuff so just a pretty pretty cool little deck here. All right, so let's let's give this a try. Here we go. <laughs> yeah, you're sad that that Helm Helm of the Host isn't in standard anymore. I know Helm of the yeah. Uh, I don't have um, the God Pharaoh statue or whatever the name of that card is in this. For Karn to grab the six mana artifact where their spells cost two more. Because just that artifact on its own isn't... It's it's okay, but it's not, like, real, real good. But whenever you'd have that with Helm of the Host and start copying those and make, make a bunch of them, that's when it would get really silly. Okay, awesome, Bert. You've been playing this a lot and loving the deck? Cool. Judith. Well, if they are making themselves lose life with Stormfist Crusader as well, we want to just pressure them. This, of course, uses my mana the best, too, where I can just go Yorvo GCG next turn. Or I could play an another questing beast. 
They're at 13. Okay, with Paradise Druid, I'm going to go Yorvo Paradise Druid. So I have more mana to play more things. Because we're going to get more cards with Stormfist Crusader. Oh, really? You love when your opponent plays Stormfist Crusader? Oh, I, I, I don't love it. Stormfist Crusader is so good. I'm basically dead. If I just block the Judith like I was doing, if they have Ember Cleave, which it just seems like they have Ember Cleave, and they Ember Cleave the Stormfist Crusader, then I would I was gonna be taking four damage. Or sorry, I was gonna be taking eight damage. I was gonna go down to one, and then the Stormfist Crusader was just gonna kill me on upkeep. So I really had to go that route, double block there, to not be dead. If I blocked Judith and they Ember Cleaved the Stormfist Crusader, I would have died. Yay, no skewer the critics. <clears throat> hmm. Two mana short from killing them. With Incubation Druid. What if... Alright, so that's 6, 7, 8. If I play... No. Yeah, it's just... It's just the best play. It's just the obvious play. Couldn't quite adapt Incubation Druid to make it an attacker. This is close. So if they have Ember Cleave, they need Ember Cleave plus something else that does damage. Like something that pumps the power. I like just blocking with the Incubation Druid here so I don't just... Because this means I don't die to, like, a Bone Crusher Giant, to, like, a Shock. Well, now, like, I would with Ember Cleave plus Bone Crusher. Plus that. That was a close game. All right, bring in Bronte and Hydra. I th 
think I just want to cut Karn. I think I think Karn's gonna be too slow. <laughs> you get to wear the I survived two Ember Cleaves tie. Do Kethis combo in standard using Ugin, Spark Double, Kethis, God Pharaoh, Statue, Oketra, or Circle of Loyalty. That would probably be pretty difficult to do. Yeah, that would probably be pretty difficult to do. All right, I'm just going to cut the Karns and play three creatures instead. Just get a Golos, a Bronte, and a Voracious Hydra in here. I don't think Ugin is slower, because while Ugin costs two more mana, it affects the battlefield right away. Karn doesn't affect the battlefield. It costs four mana, and, and all it does is put a card into your hand. cards affecting the battlefield. Stone Fist Crusader, so good. So good. Ooh, no land drop. What's also so good is Questing Beast. Questing Beast is also very good. This deck just really consistent, you know, like you don't have to worry about, you know, having like different shock lands that deal you damage, and you know, maybe you have a tap land here or anything like that. It's just, you know, monocolor deck, so it's the mana is just really good. You don't really stumble very often. You have your seven two mana mana creatures also to, to help speed you up. Yeah, I could have brought in the, the return to nature to, to destroy Ember Cleave at instant speed, but I, I have Brontodons that can do that as well. And with them only doing that and nothing else, I thought it's a little narrow since I already have Brontodons that can do that. Um, for other decks, I wouldn't necessarily mind doing that. They just got stuck on lands, even with the Crusader. Have all these cards in hand and can't play them. And I had just a great curve. Really, my perfect curve. Paradise into Yorvo into Questing Beast into Nissa. It's just my perfect curve. Just a reminder, we're doing our sub-battle stream tomorrow. That's always a lot of fun. I'm going to be playing against subscribers all day. I'll have a wheel that I, that I have set up that I spin to see what deck I'm playing each round. So I'll be playing a different deck every single match. So you get to see a lot of different decks there. And plus, you know, the subs in chat always like to bring their awesome brews too. So we get to see a whole lot of different decks. And it's a lot of fun. And that's going on tomorrow. Hope y'all on YouTube check that out too. Hmm. Gotta put two of these cards back. Bronze and I 
Yes, Nessa. My, the reason why I'm putting Brontodon back is because my plan is to go Growth Chamber on two and then activate it on three. Obviously, that's that's a fragile plan, but with us having five cards, I'm going with a fragile plan. I'm definitely not putting back a land there. You you can't you can't keep just two lands. That's All right, fragile plan did not work out. Edgewall Innkeeper? Basically just seeing more of their deck right now. I don't need to show them Vivian, I don't need to play anything. This game's obviously over. Hmm. So they're Gruel Adventure, Splashing, Rotting Registrar. I'm going to basically do the same sideboarding, but I'm going to keep one Karn in instead of bringing in the Golos. I'm going to keep one Karn in the deck. Maybe this, this game goes a little bit longer. And... Um, and I want, like, Meteor Golems. Um, to be determined, Antgar. I'm not sure. The Golos is just a, a threat to grab with Karn. They're already down to 12 because of the shock lands. I mean, one more man, like one more man of Voracious Hydra would be able to kill Lovestruck Beast. So either have a 4-5 that kills the 1-1 one, one, and then they don't get to attack with the beast. Or just make an 8-9. It seems like an 8-9 would be a problematic card for them. Very obvious Embercleave. So we drew that land, and we just kill their blocker. I mean, I don't even have to do this, of course. We just fight. 
I mean, I could just, I could just attack. I could just lethal anyway. Just show them another voracious hydra. Maybe I would have rather, rather had Ka Golos than Karn. It's a 3-5 that ramps you. Oh, man. That's what Golos is for. It's for being a 3-5 that ramps you for 5. It's a good creature. I really like Forest, Forest, Paradise, Druid, Nyssa. I like that quite a bit. The thing is, I don't like Growth Chamber Guardian, Growth Chamber Guardian, second Nyssa. So it's... It's like four good cards. It's hard to mulligan the Paradise Druid opener, because that is my best turn to play. But that's a a five card hand at best. The second Nissa, the second Growth Chamber Guardian don't matter. I, mean, I guess the second Growth Chamber Guardian matters a little bit. No, this isn't a very good hand. I mean, we need, this hand is just missing the Paradise Druid. Yeah, I understand Equip can be stopped by Spyglass. Embercleave just enters attached to a creature, so that doesn't really stop that. Great hand for my opponent. Just perfect man of the work with like the double end keeper. Bone Crusher lo loves truck, for sure. Noxious Grasp too. All that with perfect mana. Doesn't get better. Karn would only Karn would stop an Ember Cleave that's in play from equipping to another creature. It doesn't stop an Ember Cleave in hand being being played and then just automatically being attached to a creature because Ember Cleave especially it says that you can just when it enters the battlefield you can attach it to a creature. GG's destruction. Just great hand there that third game. And of course, the game one I didn't have. I just mulliganed to Oblivion, and I couldn't. I didn't get to play Magic. That third game was just an awesome hand. I don't think even even if I didn't mulligan, I don't think I could. I don't think I'd really have a hand that would stop that. Hallowed Fountain? I kind of want to play Growth Chamber Guardian against Hallowed Fountain. 
Bone Crusher Giant. Maybe not. I guess Bone Crusher Giant is a likely turn two play after Hollowed Fountain. We could have another something to kill growth chamber this growth chamber guardian. Cool. be greedy. I'm going to let them have another turn where they can kill Growth Chamber Guardian. Unfortunately, we didn't have a castle, so we were one short of being able to activate uh, or to be able to play a, a Voracious Hydra to kill that 4-4. But it was good that there was no Fires of Invention for us. Yeah, no, I don't I don't no, Destruction wasn't watching that that last game. No, yeah, yeah. Red Destruction came in here afterwards. I'm just saying what's up. I'm saying hi. Questing beast good? I think the answer is yes. <clears throat> I'm not sure how good Growth Chamber Guardian is like really going to be over time. Like I'm not, not sure how good that card's really going to be. May want to sideboard it out. May just play like a couple. I guess Nissa is a card I don't love in this matchup because of Clarion and like they're they're big creatures that attack planeswalkers easily. Yeah, I think I remember taking out Nissa last time I played this matchup. Like what if we play See like the thing about Voracious Hydra is once we have like six, seven, eight mana, Voracious Hydra killing their their creatures is pretty awesome. What if we play a bunch of Ceratops instead of Nisa? What are we doing with you, Karn? Not much without Nissa. Karn's just all about Meteor Golem. You can play like one.
I'm going to try keeping Great Henge in, but yeah, Great Henge is also kind of <clears throat> on the periphery of maybe I should have this, maybe I shouldn't. No, they did not play Fires, so that's that really helped. Um, I was definitely thinking about bringing in the Return to Nature instead of playing like the Great Henge. But we have the Brontes. Hopefully our three Brontes can hold down their four Fires. That doesn't sound super likely. But maybe I'm supposed to play Return. We'll kind of see. We're up a game, which is always, it's always good to be up a game where you can kind of play another game to kind of feel it out. Yep, this is MTG Arena. We lost to Jund Agro. They stomped us. Awesome. Have you played much Magic before, Gino? Or are you, or are you new to Magic? Okay, okay, cool. So yeah, so you know how to play magic and everything. Cool. Thanks, Candice. Yeah, so that, that's a that's a great resource for uh, kind of beginners to, to learn, or not even necessarily just beginners, but people to learn the ins and outs of magic, but but cool. <laughs> yeah, my, my sleeves are, are bugged, but they look cool. But they're bugged. Mm. <laughs> Oops. Big lights. If you don't like big lights, you may want to look away. Shiny. Alright, I'm done. Alright, go get him, Donald. These sleeves, yeah, Yud sent me a code for them. They're they're from in store in store program. And I will survive. And Yud judged an event. Yud's one of the, one of the mods here on the channel. Yud makes Yud makes all the thumbnails for YouTube. Yud does a wonderful job with the, the YouTube thumbnails. But judged a, a pioneer tournament in store that they gave out the code for those sleeves and sent them to me for my Christmas present. Bite. Okay, you've been watching eBay. Nobody sold any of the codes yet. Okay. Yeah, I guess I guess that'd be a way to acquire them too. I was very fortunate. That was a very good present. All right, two and one. Good quick win.
We definitely need to draw lands. But, you know, like, GCG, Yorvo, Karn, that's not the... I mean, that's not our best curve, but it's not the worst. The thing is, is, like, Ugin and Voracious Hydra for later. I think, especially because of Yorvo, I think I'm going to try this. Okay, let's draw lands. We got some large creatures to throw down. Let's do some blocking. Not draw more large creatures, but draw lands. Dang, it's Robert the Rich is going to be good. I think I have to block that, even though I'd rather block the Dreadhorde Butcher. Ugh. Yay. So, I'm going with Brontodon over, over Yorvo. Maybe have Brontodon trade with Butcher instead of Yorvo trade with Butcher. But I guess if they if they are going Questing Beast, or sorry, if they're going Ember Cleave, maybe this is not the best. You'd block Butcher 100%. I'm just worried about... I'm basically worried about um, keeping that 2-2 two -two alive and them getting more and more cards off that 2-2. Two -two. But yeah, this is the... This is the worst case scenario with Dreadhorde Butcher. not the worst for me. I was going to have to block that anyway, but then I was just going to take 4 damage. Now we don't have to take that 4 damage. If they would have just dealt the two damage to the Voracious Hydra, then activate Knight of the Ebon Legion on their turn, I'm taking a whole lot more damage. So it's two turns in a row where my opponent let me make more profitable trades than what I should have. Yeah, we, we probably should be dead already. Draw a land. That's not bad. If we drew a land, I, I don't think I was actually going to play Ugin. I was going to play Karn to shut down all this stuff, and then also Karn minus go grab Spyglass, and Spyglass name Knight of the Ebon Legion to keep them from activating the Knight. This will do. Then 
next turn I can do everything. I can play Ugin, play Karn, play Spyglass. I can do it all. Don't think we should have won that. All right, well, more aggro, so more voracious Hydra. Karn is good against Witch's Oven. I'll just take out one Karn, one Vivian for the extra Brontodon and Voracious Hydra. Yeah, this isn't the yeah. This is like a Rakdos aggro sacrifice. This is this isn't exactly like the the regular Jundex. Rowler riches have been good. Ugh, a Vivian? Oh man. I cannot let my opponent have Vivian. Wow, that that is way too good. Yay! Voracious Hydra comes and saves us. Save us, Voracious Hydra. Save us from Vivian. Yeah, because Golos is a creature that you can get with Karn that ramps you. And is, is a good creature, it said. It's just a good creature. That's why it's in the sideboard. I think I block. I think if, if they take their turn off again, I think I'm okay with that. We just want to draw land. Again, we just want to draw land. I just want to draw land again. No. Ah, boo. That hurts. That hurts. That, and then also not drawing a land. If we would have drawn a land, I could have played Ugin and Karn and Spyglass and Ugin ticked up. Like, we were going to have such an amazing turn if we would have drawn a fourth land and had that Druid in play. Hmm. It's like, I need Karn to Spyglass these knights so they can stop activating them. My 
if they draw a land, I die, because then they get to double activate both knights. They like you know, like both knights would be lethal. That kill me? Almost. Down to one. How am I supposed to survive at one with Dreadhorde Butcher over there? Of anything that gains life. Oh, I'm not at one now. Still dead though. No land, no land. <clears throat> I guess we just, we just have to have all of our blockers. Mm. Boo. Let's bring back in that second Vivian on the on the play. Yeah, Great Henge is our life gain. Such a high curve. We need an incubation druid not to die and me draw land. Today's been a really tough day for us drawing lands. Some days you have good mana days, some days you don't. This has been a uh, not a good day. Our Grixis deck, we just struggled so mightily. With two landers all the time. Yeah, sort of fire and ice. Land. Yay. Alright, we're starting. Now we need one more. That's a good start. Sword of Fire and nice draws. That's what I need. That don't work. Yeah, no, you, you can't do anything like that. A, a system where you have... You just automatically get two lands in your hand and then a random five, because then... No, you, you just can't do anything like that. I really do like the, the system that MTG currently has. I 
think it's just the, the right amount of variance, and it's it's the reason why Magic's been a, a game, you know, for 26 years now, going on 27. It just because it's it's so much strategy of exactly how to build your mana base and how to build, you know, like all the cost of your cards and everything. It's just it's really nice, but you know, you uh, games like this happen, and it's. It's how it's not just like the, you know, the better player doesn't always win in Magic. There's variants here. Not expecting that. <laughs> Sorry, excuse me, I didn't didn't hit the mute fast enough. But I didn't quite actually sneeze either. So Three and one. Last match of the night. Let's get to this four one. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was not expecting that ritual of set. I was not expecting that. That was I was out a lot left field there. I'm gonna play like a one-two Voracious Hydra, and then start arc bowing it. Man, it is the aggro day today. This is our fourth aggro match. It's our third red black, one Jund. Today is the day of aggro. I had turn three Voracious Hydra and then I died. I didn't even get a turn four.
Like that was that was my opponent's turn four. <clears throat> then they killed me. But they were on the play, I didn't get a turn four. I played that thinking that I could block the Knight of the Oven Legion, and then, um, yeah, I, I would have had to be careful against, um, the Blacklands Paragon, but besides that. But yeah, of course, I wish I would have just played the Parad Paradise Druid to start with. Blacklands Paragon was their fastest guard. Yeah, they have Ember Cleave. I'm dead. That's a good sign. Another Blacklands Paragon. I just need to be worried about that. Well, they had a Black Lance Paragon. They didn't just upkeep, flash it in.
I guess that's wrong, isn't it? I was thinking playing the Questing Beast first to make Great Henge cheaper, but that's just wrong. I should just play the Great Henge and then play the Questing Beast and get a counter and draw a card. That's just that's just wrong. They didn't attack with the Nikes. I think they're worried about all these things attacking back, like, and them dying. Yeah, like, that was, that was just bad by me. Yeah, that's kind of a pun. I could have drawn another card. I could have, basically I could have just had another card in hand. And I just basically chose not to draw a card. It's pretty aggressive. Okay, I was gonna say it'd be pretty aggressive to attack with the fervent champion also. have swift end and just don't cast it <laughs> magic's crazy man I'm gonna play Return to Nature. That seems like Ember Cleave is gonna be the scariest thing. No, they had a lot of black sources. Yeah, they just didn't didn't get stops in. That, that was twice that they could have played an instant before they discarded it, but didn't. Yes, track team. Yeah. I just have to have an, an amazing hand. Triple one drop, easy to cast. Come on. Yeah. This is over already. We're going down to two. I don't have anything that's going to keep me alive. Like, we're at minimum going to two. Well, three and two. We won our other two matches against Rakdos. We lost one, though. So we went 2-1 against Rakdos. 
we saw some really great hands against our mulligans where both of our both of our losses you know like our other loss we mulled to five and mulled to six and got some got ran over in a similar fashion after some mulligans um I don't really mind those losses. I mean, I think that I think that overall that the aggro decks are are just fine matches. They're not they're not like ones that we're going to be winning a hundred percent, you know. But you know, we won. Uh, you know, we won won some, lost some. Games that we were mulliganing in hands had and opponents had awesome hands. We were losing games that we were curving out. We were winning, and it's just it's just that kind of thing. It's just who curves out, kind of thing. Um, I don't think that those losses are like something we need to go change about our, like we need to go change anything about the deck though. Um, I don't know if there's any like mono green, awesome creature to play against aggro besides voracious hydra that we're playing, you know, like wicked wolf that costs four, but anything that costs like one or two mana, like something to play early. I don't think there really is. I think we're just gonna keep going with what we got there if we did play golos in the sideboard or if we played i mean i guess the yeah i wouldn't really want pelt collector a bigger grazer if we did have stone coil if golos was stone coil in the board Stone Coil kind of helps that a little bit more of, like, it gives you another card that you can play, you know, at, like, two mana. Just play, like, another two mana 2-2 two -two, or whatever, you know, that scales. Where, like, in that matchup, like, where Karn's too slow and we sideboard out Karn, we could just, you know, just have another another cheap creature to bring in. I think yeah, I think I think that's that's a good replacement. There are certainly times where you want to grab Golos to be able to ramp like with Karn. But those aren't those aren't like a a very large percentage of games. Cuz if you already have like if you have 7 mana, you want to grab Meteor Golem, not um not Golos. So I think I'm going to replace that going forward because I think that this could be just a little bit better against against um, against aggro. Hey, Bataro. Thanks for that Twitch Prime sub. I appreciate that. Yeah, there's Lovestruck Beast, but I mean, Lovestruck Beast is basically your vote. I mean, basically, I mean, I guess you get that extra 1-1. One, one. Yeah, we were we were already dead. Thanks, Pataro. But I I want I like I like this being an artifact that we grab with Karn. Basically, that's that's why I really like Stone Coil Serpent. It's an artifact to grab with Karn. Um, of course, you know it can scale up. You know, with Castle Garenbrig, you know you can make a very large Stone Coil Serpent as well. And then obviously with Vivian, uh, you can make it even larger. And and it is a, a large trample creature. I think I want to try a Stone Coil. Because, yeah, I think I want another card to play, like, turn one, turn two. Um, there. Because we have a, a lot of good stuff turn three, turn four already after after board. Okay, but still. Um, so I think this is probably my favorite deck to be playing right now. I just like its consistency. I like how we don't have to worry about, like, all these shock lands. And, you know, do we have the right color of mana? And are, are we taking damage? Or are we... Uh, is our lands coming into play tapped? Just nice and easy. You got your forest. You got your castles. Voracious Hydra was still an all-star. Um, you know, we just played all aggro. You know, like we didn't play like like any of the uh, bigger decks where Karn shines more. But yeah, Stone Coil is pretty great. Stone Coil is pretty great. So I think we're gonna change change that up. 
All right, so there's Mono Green Midrange. Probably my favorite deck to be playing right now in Standard. I like playing it. Uh, those of y'all watching on YouTube, hit that like button over there. Hope you enjoyed the deck. Also, you know, we've played this a few times. If you, if you did like it, you know, check the, um, you know, check on the, the videos for, for some more Mono Green Midrange. Check over the last few, you know, couple of weeks we've played this a, a few times. And we've had lots of good records. And, you know, we've played this, you know, you could, if you watch back to the last time that we played it, you could see us play against Jun Sacrifice and see Karn shut down at Jund Sacrifice. Um, if you check out the last time we played this here. Uh, but that's that's all I got here, though. So thanks so much for watching some Monogreen Midrange, and I'll see you for the next video.